So how can you become happier? Try this experiment. Start mentally pretending that you already have what it is that you think you want. So let's say you want more money. Wake up in the morning and say, I love that I'm making more money. Now, don't confuse this for just visualization with no action. Because after that, once you start creating that emotion that I already have what I want, then you go out and are fueled by that to just go out and act, act in that way. If you say, I want to great, great, great at investing and saving my money, then just say to yourself, I love that I'm great at saving and investing in money. And when it comes time to spend all your money or put a little in the savings account, your mind will be expecting that you're a great saver and a great investor. This goes beyond visualization. This is visualization in action, positive thinking with action attached to it. You need both. And you can do this for every area, including happiness. I was thinking a little bit about what I said earlier on how to be happier. One of the things that I realized is, you know, happiness is an outgrowth of multiple factors. A lot of people like to oversimplify happiness. And so I wasn't trying to earlier oversimplify. What I was saying is basically, I'll, I'll lay it out like this formula. To be happy is to very similar to creating a good bowl of soup. Create a good bowl of soup, you need to have a little chicken broth. Let's say it's chicken noodle soup. You can't just have chicken broth only. You, you need some salt, you need some vegetables and celery and salt and all those things. So there's no one factor. Some factors are bigger than others, just like in soup, you need more broth than you need salt. So what happens is in life we get stuck, my hair's a little crazy here, we get stuck, why? Well, because we are where we are now and it's hard to conjure up the faith to get where we wanna be. So what I was saying about earlier about visualization, the reason visualization is important, even though it's not the only thing you need because you gotta take action, is that visualization bridges the gap. So as I was giving, illustrating earlier, if you're horrible at saving money, right, you suck at it. So you always pretty much spend or get into debt. Well, so that's where you're here. To be happier, one of the ingredients in the soup of happiness is financial security. You don't have to be a millionaire or a billionaire. But it's been proven over and over. Daniel Kahneman won a Nobel Prize as an economist. I think he's at Princeton. And he did a, uh, extensive research, high-level scientific research by one of the most respected economists. And he found that if you're making too little income, the stress that comes with that decreases your happiness. So it's not true that money doesn't increase happiness. It does up to a point. Doesn't mean, again, again you have to be a millionaire or billionaire to happy. He found a threshold of around 70 thousand dollars a year in the United States and most uh, uh, Western countries. So you're here, let's say, for example, you suck at saving money. To one of the things to be happier, that's what I'm talking about now, you got to jump over to here where you're better. So how do you bridge that gap? That takes faith. And faith is hard. That's why very few people have it. And I'm not talking about faith in the religious sense. I'm talking about the belief that you can jump from there to there because every one of us, myself included, we get stuck. And when you're stuck, the longer you get stuck, the more you start to lose hope that you can ever get unstuck. You see that with patterns of addiction and drinking and alcohol. So one of the ways that I use, and I've found it's amazing, it works amazingly well, much better than you think, is to start just acting in your mind like you're already there. And they call it self-talk. You don't, don't, <laughs> don't, you want your friends to think you're crazy. You don't have to literally talk out loud unless you're in the shower. I do a lot in the shower. And then you just start saying to yourself like, you know what? I, and I use this pattern so you can adopt it and copy it or come up with your own. I just say, I love blank. So I would just say, when I'm over here and I suck at saving money, I just say, I love that I'm good at saving money. I love that I don't always go into debt. I love that my net worth is going up. I love that my bank account is going up. I love that I'm able to resist spending when I know I should save. And I found you have to start saying this to yourself every day or at least four or five times a week for approximately, mm, it starts to kick in two weeks to about three months later. And I, I don't know if that's an exact, there's no science I can prove this, but one thing I found is that the worse the habit is, sometimes the more you have to do this before it kicks in. So just try it. Like I said, I found it works extremely well. So. Try it, 
and leave a comment. If you've ever do, done it, let me know your results. I'd love to hear that. And, I, and like I said, you can use this not just be better with investing, if you're not good at dieting, if you're not fit, that'll affect your happiness. You can use this to start saying, I love that I resist eating you know, ice cream at midnight. I love that I work out you know, four times a week. Just start saying that. Then, and I'll talk about this in future videos, you gotta kick in and do the action. This is just like a jump start. A jump start. You still gotta do the action. You can't just do this, okay? Leave a comment. I hope this daily happiness tip of the day helps you out. And uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. Giving away all kinds of cool stuff. By being a subscriber, you're automatically entered. All right? Talk to you soon.